Hey, I'm going to explore some updates to various 3D AI animation tools, firstly looking at Say Motion and their new ability to combine motion capture data from a video source with animation generated from a text prompt, and you can merge and now do in-painting. Then I'll be exploring some exciting updates to Cascadeur, a fantastic piece of software that enables you to pose 3D characters and then using AI apply physics to those, and there's various updates there to do some really cool things. I'll quickly show off some new AI animation output abilities from Meshi AI. And lastly, I've been sent this parcel by Rococo, so I'm gonna do my first ever unboxing video, probably my last as well, as I try out their new head cam for driving facial capture on a 3D character. All right, on with the video. The team over at Deep Motion, who for a long time have been one of the leaders in video to motion capture, um, their new Say Motion tools just had a new update. So now with Say Motion, as well as being able to do text prompt animations, for example, I could write leaping into sky and doing ninja landing. If I wanted to, I could use their prompt enhancer to improve it. And that changes to jumping into the sky and landing like a ninja. I've got the physics filter on, which helps reduce any of the arms or legs going through the mesh, stopping some of that self collision. As I'm on one of their paid tiers, I can change the number of variations created from two up to four. Higher paid tiers can now do up to eight variations. And I'm gonna leave foot locking on and press generate. And this took around 30 seconds to create these four different variations. But one of the cool features is that you can now combine this text 3D animation with some motion capture created animation. So in the top left of this preview window, we now have a text and a video button here. So I can click on video and preview any previous uh, video generations where you upload a source 2D video. I filmed this one very quickly on a windy day, just using my iPhone propped up on a table. And I had this little animation of character walking to the left, walking to the right, looking up and then crouching down. And I can go ahead and press import animation. And then go back to the text mode and you can see we now have this new animation being generated up here. I have that imported animation applied to a default character here. And I can go up and press the merge button up here on the top menu. And then press this button up on the left of the timeline and click my jumping text animations that we just generated. And I can try out the different samples here. I'm going to go for variant number four. So we go from that initial animation using that video into that jumping animation. I'm just going to pull that back along here, change the width of this merging section here and press generate animation. And there we go, in around 10 to 15 seconds, we now have my initial animation from the video source blending pretty seamlessly in with that text animation as well. So a really nice way of merging different things together. Also via the top menu, you can now do in-painting as well to add to your animations. So if I click that, we'll see the timeline here and I can click hold of this clip, move it along the timeline, press the button here on the left. I can increase the size of this new clip, perhaps having a little bit of overlap and write out a text prompt, character stands and waves, press save, press generate. And there we go, really, really cool. I've got a character waving, um, playing out a little animation from my video source and then into that final 3D text animation jumping as well. And there's a little bit of wobble here and things like that. And perhaps when you're doing those generations, you can increase the smoothing or take it into your 3D package and refine some of those keyframes. But there we go, a very nice update from Say Motion. Another 3D animation tool that's had a recent update is Cascadeur, a really cool piece of software that enables you to pose characters and it uses AI or machine learning to pose characters in a realistic way. So you can click the various elements of the character to set their poses and the rig will move in a realistic way. Um, and you can go through the timeline press the key button, to set some different poses and you can highlight certain keyframes, apply different bezier curves, linear curves, change the IK to FK in some examples and the package does so much more setting fulcrum points and things like that to improve the animation and then you can also turn on auto physics up here and it will create a ghost a copy of your character with physics applied and you can play through and see how it refines the animation applying real physics with more subtle movement and it can do so much more than this so this is just a very quick look at what Cascadeur has been able to do for quite a while now. In their very latest update, there's now improved collision detection and you can have characters swinging from items in your scene. So you can create scenes like this, which look really very, very cool with that auto physics applied to create realistic motion. They've added new filters for improving animation, particularly with rotations like in this scene. You can now have multiple characters in a scene with the collision detection and the center of gravity, the center of mass, being applied to multiple characters to create these dynamic animations, which look fantastic. And it now supports blend shapes. So if you've got a character rig with blend shapes, you can now work with those inside of Cascadeur. Um, don't actually know how you say it, Cascadeur, Cascadeur. However, 
Um, they've improved the way you can pose the character in the scene so as you move the rig around it will actually detect the floor and the hands and body will react to being pushed against the floor. So lots of really good updates for a very cool piece of software which I think is using AI in a really positive way allowing animators to speed up the production of their work whilst having that very much needed control. Very very cool and something I want to play around with much more myself as well. Very quickly in Meshi AI, I just wanted to show off some of their new animation features. So we've had the animation button for a while now. So once you've generated a character in a T-pose, you can press this animation button, choose humanoid, or if you have a quadruped, you can select this one here. Let's go for humanoid, quickly set where the various joints are. Whereas before we only had walking and running, there's now a lot more pre-made animations in their library that you can apply to your character rig and then download as an FBX. So there's attacking, fighting, different styles of running, um, idle movements which might be useful. So very handy and a quick way to get started if any of these suit your project. All right and lastly I'm going to quickly do an unboxing of this parcel from Rococo as I try out their new head cam for doing facial capture. Thank you very much Rococo for sending me this um, and I never do unboxing videos like ever but since I've got a box here we go. Oh. It's like the ultimate shoe box and there we have the head cam. Cool. You've got a crap view there, you can't see anything. So just a couple of things in the box. We have the how-to guide, no stickers, a headband, and a piece of foam, and the camera itself. Quickly read the instructions. So I've attached the back strap to the front, and it says you can just slide this in to click it in place. So yeah, there we go, very lightweight and I can wind and unwind this to change the strap length. It's got a USB-C, fancy camera. I believe it has a microphone built in as well. And it says you can adjust the focus on the camera by twisting it at the front very gently. It's gonna be really cool to try this out and maybe compare it to some other AI, lip syncing, facial tracking options like Live Portrait. And I suspect this is gonna win out and obviously you could use this to drive actual 3D rig which will be amazing. I think it's safe to say it's very hard to wear a head cam like this or a VR headset without looking like a bit of a tech geek but um yeah let's go and check this thing out. Ah now slight problem I was hoping to then show you this working uh, with the Rococo Studio software as it was working earlier. Um, at the moment you have to have it plugged into an Android phone um, using their facial capture app on there and then you stream that to your computer and it was working um, and now it's not and I can't get it to sync and I suspect that's because I'm using an old um, Pixel 1 Android phone as I'm normally rocking an iPhone which isn't currently supported um, but I will revisit again in a video very very soon once it's plugged in you actually get a light here on the inside that shines on your face um, and when it was working I could move my face and see one of their default characters in Rococo Studio being animated with the eyes moving mouth everything like that really very cool so instead, I'll just show a few clips from their promo video. Um, as you can see, it can work really well and you can combine it with things like MetaHuman and other 3D software. I'm interested in trying it out with other software as well, like Adobe's Character Animator and other facial animation tools as well, just to see how it works. As essentially, it's a webcam, but a high quality webcam in a really nice light form factor, nice and stable to be able to give you consistent facial capture. So really nice device. I just can't show it working right now. All right, I will try and share more videos soon. Plus check out the new AI animation courses over at aianimation.com. There's a new one which I'm working on at the moment. Um, cheers, have a nice day. Oh, and press like, press subscribe and leave any comments. Cheers.